So when we close our eyes and go to sleep, we wake up into a different reality. We wake up into a confusing place that we call dreams, hopefully not a nightmare. And we don't really understand what's happening there, but it all seems to make perfectly good sense while you're there. If you do happen to remember it, once you wake up and you try to make sense out of it, it doesn't make any sense because the rules are all different. The rules of our everyday life are much different than other dimensions. And this dimension that we're speaking of, of the dream, is one of them. It's not a physical dimension. It's a mental, a mental dimension, and we could even call it a spiritual dimension. And there can be precognition in that. In other words, we can sometimes see something that's going to happen in the future. And the problem with it is, is that it's in that other dimension and it usually doesn't look like the world where the event's going to happen in this dimension, the waking dimension. So when we try to when we try to use this information from a dream, our our biases and our everyday thoughts and personal histories all interfere with trying to interpret what that dream was saying. So it's. The more you spend in those situations, the, the, the more you understand the problem. This morning, well, even last night, I went to bed and meditated for several hours. And what I really was doing was experiencing a long, lucid dream. And I understood that I was in the dream world and I understood, you know, that I was actually laying on the bed uh, in a different type of mental state than normal. I did that this morning also for about three hours. I was, I was basically in a, a long lucid dream and I was just trying to work out this these different rules, these different ways of understanding and trying to apply the waking world to the dream world. And i tell you what, I wasn't having that much luck at it, <laughs> but it was sure fun. So, so it was in this milieu, in this questioning uh, that was going on within me that uh, I had an extraordinary experience of consciousness that uh, uh, told me that consciousness was even much more than I thought it was. And so, so after that experience, I, I, you know, it was clear that consciousness was something way beyond what science was even hinting at. And, uh, and uh, I needed to explore it because that experience was so powerful and so life changing that uh, I, I could not let it go. And it was through this process that I arrived at the conclusion about 20 years later that consciousness must be fundamental. It must be the starting point of reality as opposed to the ending point of an evolution that created us. And I came back with an understanding and a knowledge that I had crossed over into another dimension. I was transformed. I was always really reluctant to break so fundamentally from Corban and maybe Ibn Arabi, although I, um, 
we got to give up that tripartite cosmology and admit that it's all imagination and then work with the consequences of that. And and why do I say that? I mean, for a lot of reasons, but one is um, I have a background in the sciences and, and I and it's all imagination. You know, I mean, it's just all imagination. What else could it be? I mean, I, I, I always have a rock handy um, because I mean, if anything's going to be fundamental, it's good in the sciences. It's going to be geology and rocks, <laughs> and it's it's not that they're going to disappear on you. I mean, there is something to this whole matter business. But if you take your basic rock and you talk about it with a quantum physicist, it disappears into vibration and energy. It just it's vibrating really fast and really little, and which is why it seems solid to us. But it's not really so real. What do you mean by really? And then you look at this rock, and if you know any geology, all of a sudden your brain's just full of ideas and associations and analogies, and the rock. It's still there in some sense, but suddenly it's an entire universe of, you know, if you know any geology, it's an entire universe of crystals and deep time and dinosaurs. And there's nothing in the physical world that doesn't infinitize itself when you start paying attention to it. So Corbin's tripartite cosmology, even at the level of matter, just won't do because it's imagination all the way down and all the way up. Then, of course, you're still left with this nagging problem of the difference between fantasy and reality.